This video is actually one of the lessons from my new Adobe Illustrator Masterclass course. And today we're going to be focusing on two things using appearance effects and also creating some cool text effects whilst also keeping everything editable. And there's a link below if you'd like to check out the full course. But with that said, let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to look at working with appearances and effects. So you can see I've added some text to the artboard. And even though we haven't covered adding text yet, if you want to quickly add some, select the type tool, click anywhere, and then you can type your text and choose the properties from the right hand side. Right now, let's open up the appearance panel and add a new fill color. And we can select a color from the drop down, and you can see the color is applied to the selected object. However, if we zoom in really close, you can see we have this black fringing around the edge. And the way to get around this is if we delete this color to start with, what we want to do first is go over to the bottom of the toolbar and set that fill to none. Now, of course, you won't be able to see the text, but if you go and add that new fill again, you can then either choose a color from the swatches panel or you can hold down shift and click and this will enable you to pick a color using the color sliders. So let's go back and choose that same yellow again. And you can see now the text is completely yellow and that black fringing around the edge is completely gone. And that black color was poking out the edges because the black and the yellow were essentially on top of one another. Okay, so now that's working, let's go and select gray as the fill color. And we can select this icon here to duplicate the selected effect. And if we scroll to the bottom, you can see we now have two gray fills. And we're going to be adding quite a few more, so let's extend this panel down. Now, if you're following along, you can download the project files where I've already created some global swatches. So for the bottom of those two gray fills, let's select this yellow. Now, of course, we can't see it because this is underneath the gray fill, but don't worry, we will change that. So next, go up to Effect, or you can access this menu from the bottom of the Appearance panel. Let's go up to Distort and Transform, and select Transform. And with this panel, we can adjust the size, position, and rotation of the selected effect. And as you can see, adjusting the sliders moves the position of this yellow fill. And let's try adjusting the scale. Okay, let's set the scale back to 100%. We'll leave that as it is. And we'll set move to zero as well. Now, if we go and increase the move values ever so slightly, so we'll add a few pixels to horizontal and vertical, you can see we've offset the yellow fill by three pixels to the right and three pixels down. And if we increase the number of copies, it will repeat this transform effect. And there we go, that's one way to create a long drop shadow. Okay, let's press return. And if you want to clear all your appearance effects, you can click this icon to do so, but let's undo that. And I'm going to select the yellow fill and then duplicate this again. And now from the color picker, I'm going to select the yellow color alongside. And this is similar, but slightly different. And then I can expand the fill down and see all of the effects that I've added to this fill. Okay, with this selected, let's go and add another effect. We'll go to path and select offset path. And we can increase or decrease this value to quite literally offset the path, which kind of creates a border around the text. And with any fills and effects that you add, remember that you can select these and drag them around to reorder them. So let's drag that lighter yellow on the bottom above the other one. And now for this one, I'm actually going to select the transform effect and delete it. And you can see that three pixel offset disappears. Now with the bottom yellow selected, let's go and add another effect. And this time we're going to add a drop shadow. And from this panel, you can adjust the X and Y offset, and this will adjust the horizontal and vertical position of the drop shadow. The opacity will determine how transparent the shadow is. And by increasing the blur value, this will soften the shadow and make it more blurred. And if you bring this down to zero, the shadow will be crisp and hard. So let's go and do that now, and you'll see what I mean. So let's go and adjust some of these settings. Now by default the drop shadow is black, however we can click on the color picker and choose our own color. And we can also switch over to color swatches if you want to use a specific color. And as it happens I've got a specific global swatch and I'm going to select it here. So let's click OK. And instead of using a color you can also check darkness and then bring down the value to see how it looks. But for this we're going to use color. Let's press return and our text now has a subtle drop shadow. Now let's duplicate this fill again and this will duplicate all the effects as well. Expand the panel down and we're going to change the color to the lighter orange. And of course we don't see this color change because this fill is underneath all of the others. So let's select the drop shadow and we'll delete this from this fill. And for this one, let's go and change the offset. 
So we'll increase this value. And you can see if we keep adding multiple offsets, we can essentially use this to keep adding multiple strokes. Let's undo that one for now. And if we select the orange fill, we're going to duplicate this one as well. And for this one, let's expand this down and then change the color to the slightly darker orange. Now this fill already has that offset path effect, but now let's go and add another transform effect. And if I go and adjust the move values ever so slightly, let's go for a few pixels each, and you can see it moves that darker orange fill. And essentially what we're doing is layering up all of these different effects onto a single text object. And doing it this way keeps the text fully editable. Now if we go and change the offset of the bottom yellow, you can also hold down command or control and use the up and down arrow keys to move in smaller increments. And if we zoom back out, you can see we're still using that gray color for the main body of the text. So let's go and change that to white. There we go, much better. Now let's collapse some of these down and keep these fills a bit more organized. And now let's go and select the rectangle tool and click anywhere and create a rectangle that is a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. Basically the same width as the artboard. And then from the gradient panel, let's click on the slider to add that default black to white gradient. And then let's align this to the center of the artboard. Now, of course, this covers everything, so let's right click, go to Arrange, and select Send to Back. Now, from the Gradient panel, choose Radial Gradient. And for the two swatches at either end, we're going to select two colors. And for this one, I'm going to choose the lighter orange. And then for the other one, I'm going to choose one of the two yellows. So now we've added a background, let's go to Object, Lock and Selection, just so we don't move it around by mistake. And then with the text selected, I'm going to head back to the Appearance panel, select the Transform of the bottom most fill color, and then we're going to add another effect, and that's going to be a drop shadow. And let's adjust these settings by increasing the blur, we're going to increase the opacity and make the shadow more prominent, and we're then going to adjust the X and Y offset to move the shadow further to the right and then down a bit. There we go, this is looking good, and what this drop shadow does is help to lift the text off the background. And if we turn this effect off and back on, you can see the difference. Right, now let's make the background a bit more interesting. So we'll start by selecting the line tool, and let's enter 500 pixels for the length and set the angle to 90 degrees. And we now have a vertical line and we can align this both centrally and to the top edge of the artboard. Next, make sure the stroke and fill are set to none and that the stroke is selected. And then from the swatches panel, apply the default black to white gradient. And if we increase that stroke weight, you should get something that looks like this. Now let's change the width profile and we'll select one that tapers off at one end. And remember you can click this icon here to flip this around. And let's go and thicken this up a bit more. And then we can go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and select Transform. And let's start by creating a bunch of copies, so we'll go for something like 30. And if we change the angle of rotation, you can see all of those copies in action. However, this does look a bit of a mess. And we can start to fix this by setting the reference point to the bottom middle one. And this changes the point of rotation for this transform. Now we can also use this box to do math. So let's type 360, that's the number of degrees in a circle, divided by the number of copies, which is 30. And these are all now equally spaced apart. Now we can of course adjust the number of copies and you can click in the rotation box and use the up and down arrow keys to adjust this. And you can cycle through different rotation values using the up and down arrow keys. And you can again hold down command or control to move in smaller increments. And you can keep moving in smaller increments until you've closed all of the gaps. And this is a bit more of a manual way of doing things. Either way, I'm happy with the result. And there are some other options here, check boxes that you can turn on and off, but uh, we'll leave those alone for now. Okay, let's press return. 
Now you can see if I zoom out and then select this line and try and resize it, the results can be somewhat unpredictable, resizing something that has a transform effect applied. However, in this instance, if we hold down Alt or Option and Shift and scale from the center, we can keep everything central even if the spacing between the shapes changes. So you can see there it's created a few gaps, but because we know the spacing between each shape is consistent, all we need to do is select this line and then increase the stroke weight until these gaps are gone. And now that's looking good, we can select opacity and from the drop down, we'll change the blending mode. And we'll look at blending modes in more detail in another lesson. And essentially they enable us to blend objects together in a variety of different ways. So for now, let's choose overlay or soft light. And you can see it blends this pattern we've created over the orange gradient. Now, whilst we can see our text, this pattern is still on top of it. So to easily select the text, we can right click over it, go to select, and select next object below. And because the text is underneath, it's now selected. And with the text selected, we can right click on it, go to arrange, and then bring this to the front. And making sure this is on top, will just make it much easier to select. Now, sometimes when you have a lot of objects taking up the entire screen, you can't really click anywhere and deselect anything. So if you want to deselect everything that you have selected, you can do this up here. Now we also have a lot of excess around the edge of the artboard. We can also go to view and trim view and everything outside the artboard will be temporarily hidden. And this can sometimes make life a bit easier. Now this pattern effect is quite strong. So if we select the line, something else we can adjust is the opacity. And by reducing the opacity, you can make the selected object more transparent. So if we set this to 40% and press return, you can see this effect is now a bit more subtle. And just like we did in the previous lesson, we're now going to go to window and we're going to open up the graphic styles panel. And we can drag our text object into this panel and it will create a new graphic style out of all of those appearance effects that we've added. And we can try this out by creating a new basic shape and then select the graphic style from the panel and all of those appearance effects are instantly applied to this object. So it doesn't matter if it's a text object or a shape. And if we resize this or round off those corners, you can see how these appearance effects change with the shape. Right, let's delete this and close this panel down. And lastly, I'm going to select the type tool with T on the keyboard. And we can of course select and edit the text. And if we select this with the main selection tool, we can scale this up or down and everything is scaling proportionally. However, if we open up the transform panel options, we can also uncheck scale strokes and effects and any values that we've entered for the stroke and the effects, they will all be kept exactly as they are, even if we adjust the scale of the object. So if you're trying to adjust the scale and it isn't working how you intended, try checking or unchecking that box first. And if you'd like another juicy illustrated video, well, I've got one for you right here. But as always, take care and I'll see you next time.